What's up YouTube? This is James coming back at you with another informative video. Hope everybody's doing well out there on this first Friday of the new year. I'm doing good myself. Uh, Shabbat Shalom to the brothers and sisters in recognition to observing this day for the Most High. Sundown this evening to sundown tomorrow evening. Let's get some worship and praises in. Let's start this new year off right. You understand? That's what we need to do because we, we, we got to incorporate the Most High you understand, in um, our living. We have to, because things are just, ooh. Time is rapidly speeding up. Things are changing right before our eyes. You know, we're hearing about all kinds of national disasters. You understand, it's just like what he said it was going to be. Rumors of, war, uh, war, rumors of wars, you know, earthquakes in diverse places. You know, all kinds of crazy stuff. That's just like the sister, uh, Annette, of Judah, man, um, she showed me this uh, picture these, this, of this video in Australia where the sky literally turned red. Hang on, let me show you guys. This picture right here is one of 47 pictures of what's actually happening in Sydney, Australia. You understand? Um, right about right about now, as a matter of fact, it is the result of um, out of control bushfires you know what i mean and as it says down here it says four thousand people got trapped on beach in the town of malakofa malakota something like that malakuta whatever in victoria state after being surrounded by out of control bushfires which turned the sky blood red you understand they also over there um they got a beautiful display of uh, fireworks as well you know, and uh, as you can see over here, just from the result of those fires, look what it's got the just the atmosphere. You know, it's actually just smoky. You know, look like you may need a, some kind of um, hazmat, you know, one of those masks, you know, oxygen masks or something like that just to wear to be out in public, you know. But this is what, uh, look at that. Out of control bushfires, see. And also, the thing about it, it's something in this fire. You know, but yet and still they find time to do stuff like this. <laughs> Put on fireworks to play for the New Year's Eve here. See, celebration in, you know, Sydney. So obviously, you know, I guess this pretty much is recreation during a, a real uh, devastating time in that country over there. They're passing time off with fireworks while things is looking like this. Myself, I couldn't be thinking about no, no fireworks. You know, and I'm, my environment is looking like this. You know, no. But my point, is, you know, is what I said at the beginning, you know, the intro. Hey, earthquakes in diverse places, fires and stuff like that, you know, uh, all over the place. You know, I've been here in all kinds of places that were burning, you know. Now it's Sydney, Australia. Yeah, they are, you know, wearing those masks. But that's pretty much what I want to show you guys. Even in the daytime, man, smoke. It's, everything is hazy looking. Look at that. This is really not normal. They everywhere. They all over the world. All over the world. All over the world. Well, that's pretty much what I want to show you. Let's get back to the story at hand. Okay, this story right here takes place, and I think I'm pronouncing it right. I'm not sure, but let's just say. Xinjiang, China, or something like that. Overall, just, let's just say China. Anyway, uh, these people are disgustingly ruthless and very, very disrespectful, okay? What you guys are about to witness, I don't think that um, I could have, you know, really just sit there and watch if I attended this person's funeral. You know what I mean? If I just, you know, even had to just get up and just leave. But let alone if it had been a friend 
or a close relative that I, I actually deemed as a family member. I'm going to tell you, what these bastards finna come in here and do, I would have had to raise the roof on. I'm telling you. I'm serious. Uh, we're going to watch probably about a couple minute, minutes of this video. Then I'll get into my commentary. Check this shit out. Oh, they speaking in their native language, so it ain't going to be shit we're going to be able to understand. But at the very least, you can laugh. You know what I mean? Check this out. That's a goddamn shame. Every last one of these sons of bitches needs stumped right where they stand. Bitch, please. Now, behavior like that shouldn't be accepted in any culture, from any culture. Because the way I look at it is it like this. You know, well, first of all, let me tell you why they did this shit. It says right here, that's cold. Children dragged dead father's body from Cassie because he abandoned them years ago. The kids' justification was that since their late father had left them and their mother for another woman, they had to endure a number of hardships on their own. Okay, number one. If you really felt like that, why go to the funeral? What if if that man had other children there from this other woman that he left y'all ass for and they was there? It would have been some kung fu fighting. You know what I mean? I'm just saying that that was some cold ass disrespectful shit. And then one of them, and then they even spit on it. The dead body. And while this eternal looking motherfucker right here, he sit there and he did shit, just let him do it. I ain't trying to stop him or nothing. See? This is, man, God. Ooh, we. That was too much. Some go, it, <laughs> something gonna happen in China behind this shit, and I'm hoping we get the story when it does. Now it says, okay, brace yourself. I never seen anything like this before, and you probably haven't either. In Zhang, what's it, Zhang Su, China, the children of an old man had passed away after a long time illness learned of his death and decided to attend his wake as most children are meant to do after their parents pass away according to the reports the old man had allegedly abandoned his wife and his children nearly 40 years ago for another woman while having the audacity to stay in the same village 
as his first family. Then how come they didn't do shit to him when he was alive? See, a bunch of fucking cowards. Then it goes on to say here, whether or not they were justified, the children walked into their, where their father lay and pulled his corpse out of the casket, slapping it onto the floor over and over again. They claim how they had to endure a number of hardships on their own, alone with their mother, who they cherished. <laughs> Y'all some ooh-wee. But the thing is this. Let's just say, hypothetically speaking, what if he left the woman because he found out it was one of the Maury Povich moments and none of these bastards was actually his and then they come back all these years later and do this to his, you know, his body at his funeral. What about that? I couldn't have sit through it. I, I, I don't know about y'all. I couldn't, if I'd have went to this man's funeral, I could have been a brother. I could have been a, a friend, a cousin. And these bastards had have walked in here and did some shit like that. I'm telling you, it wouldn't have been good. It would have been, what was that? Big trouble in little China. <laughs> I'm telling you, it would have been. I couldn't sit there and watch no shit like this. This is awful. You talking about disrespect and content and every damn thing else. Just don't go to the funeral. See? Ugly, ugly, ugly. Y'all tell me what y'all think about this story right here. I'm interested in hearing y'all thoughts and views and opinions on it. Uh, like, comment, and share, and subscribe. And, um... This is James, and please remember to live your life as though we are being watched, simply because we are, and I'm out. Peace.